Say we have an algebraic number. Then that number will, by definition, satisfy a polynomial over its base field. In our last video, we took some examples of algebraic numbers, like radical 3 minus radical 2, and we discovered polynomials, for this one it was t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1, of which these are roots. But we want to take that a step further. To conclude our cinder alpha story, we want to know whether there is one prince for every princess, whether every algebraic number has some polynomial which fits it the best, which fits it the most like a glove. We call that the minimal polynomial of this algebraic number. And a minimal polynomial will fit like a glove for three reasons. First of all, this alpha has to be a root. In other words, it has to fit, period. But second of all, it has to be as simple as possible. And simple as possible means two things. That that polynomial be monic, its leading coefficient be equal to 1, and that that polynomial be irreducible. In other words, we can't break it down any further. It's the most basic polynomial, therefore of lowest degree, of which alpha is a root. In this video, we'll verify whether or not the polynomials we found in the last videos for our algebraic numbers do in fact fit this description and are minimal polynomials for those algebraic numbers. And then we'll talk about why the Cinder Alpha story really has a happy ending, that every algebraic number has one and only one minimal polynomial. So as a reminder, a minimal polynomial is minimal precisely because alpha is the root of it, it's monic, and it's irreducible. And as a reminder again, monic means that the leading coefficient of p is equal to 1. Now naturally, since we're working over a field, if we happen to find a polynomial that fits both 1 and 3, that alpha is a root and it's irreducible, we can make it monic just by dividing by its leading coefficient. We can do that because our coefficients belong to a field, therefore everything non-zero can be divided by. It's the irreducibility part that proves to be the most challenging. What it implies is that this polynomial has minimal degree. In other words, uh, if my minimal polynomial is quadratic, for example, then I can't also have another minimal polynomial that's cubic or quartic, right? We're going to have the lowest degree possible uh, that alpha is a root of. So in our previous video, we looked at four examples of algebraic numbers, three of them over the rationals and one of them over z mod 3. I'd like to know if the polynomials that we discovered actually fit this description. Well, we know that each of them fits the description number one, that alpha is actually a root of these. That's how we found these, after all. We, we sort of insisted that each of them be a polynomial of which alpha is a root. Also, the way that we discovered them, we happened to create monic polynomials already. Their leading coefficients are all equal to 1. So as usual, irreducibility is the sticky wicket. This is the tricky part. So let's call in the irreducibility police and find out if these four polynomials are in fact irreducible over their base fields. Well, t cubed minus 5 is quick and easy. It satisfies Eisenstein's irreducibility criterion with a prime equal to 5. Therefore, by Eisenstein's criterion, this is an irreducible polynomial. Therefore, this p fits all three of those parts of the description. And this p is a minimal polynomial for the cubed root of 5 over the rationals. The other simple one in this list is t squared plus 2. Sorry, that should uh, actually say t squared plus 1. Let me fix that. t squared plus 1 for z mod 3. And that is irreducible over z mod 3 because it's a quadratic polynomial that has no roots in z mod 3. Therefore, it is irreducible over z mod 3. And t squared plus 1 is a minimal polynomial for the square root of negative 1 over z mod 3. So it's these two examples in the middle that cause us the most heartburn. Let's first talk about t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1. This one's nasty. Quartics are the first kinds of polynomials where it's, you can get really nasty behavior with trying to determine whether they're irreducible. So how do we figure out whether a quartic is irreducible? We can guarantee that it has no rational roots. And so we can't factor it into something of degree 1 times something of degree 3. But that doesn't rule out the possibility that we couldn't factor this into something that's quadratic times something that's quadratic, and each of those quadratics have no rational roots. So what we do is we reach for a theorem. This theorem appeared in the American Mathematical Monthly in 1989 by Cap and Warren. And the theorem says if we have a polynomial that has this form, t to the fourth plus bt squared plus c, then that polynomial factors over the rationals if and only if one of these three numbers, b squared minus 4c, minus b plus 2 radical c, and minus b minus 2 radical c, if any one of those is a perfect square in the rationals, then this polynomial will factor. But it's an if and only if statement. 
So if none of these are a perfect square in the rationals, then this polynomial will be irreducible. And since our, minimal poly since our polynomial fits this description, all we have to do is take b equals negative 10, c equals 1, and figure out what these three numbers come out to, 96, 12, and 8. None of those, as you can check, are perfect squares in the rationals. Therefore, since this is an if and only if statement, we can conclude this polynomial is irreducible over q. There are probably other ways to determine whether this is in fact an irreducible polynomial, but this is really the one that requires the least effort. And it actually gives us really nice computational criterion for polynomials that are quartic, um, but which are even functions, which don't have the t to the first or t to the third powers in them. So we can use Cap and Warren's criterion to determine that this is in fact irreducible over q, and therefore this p is a minimal polynomial for radical 3 minus radical 2 over the rationals. That was the trickiest one. So that leaves only t to the fifth minus 1. This polynomial of which e to the 2 pi i over 5, the primitive fifth root of unity, is a root. So what about it? Well, t to the fifth minus 1 fails the simplest irreducibility test that there is, that of having a rational root. Because if t is equal to 1, 1 to the fifth minus 1 is equal to 0. So a rational root exists for this polynomial over the rationals, and therefore we can factor a t minus 1 out of it. So the irreducible police bust this one. This is not a minimal polynomial because it fails the irreducibility criterion. We can factor t to the fifth minus 1 using polynomial division. We can bring a t minus 1 out of it, again, because 1 is a root. And we find out that the quotient is t to the fourth plus t cubed plus t squared plus t plus 1. So t to the fifth minus 1 is not minimal. But it's possible that this quotient, 1 plus t plus t squared plus t cubed plus t to the fourth, is a minimal polynomial for, t to the, uh, for e to the 2 pi i over 5. Maybe. And we can show using Eisenstein's criterion and substituting t plus 1 for t into this polynomial. When you substitute t plus 1 for t, we get a polynomial which is Eisenstein with prime 5 and therefore is irreducible. So in fact, the minimal polynomial for e to the 2 pi i over 5 over the rationals is t to the fourth plus t cubed plus t squared plus t plus 1. We call it the cyclotomic polynomial for e to the 2 pi i over 5. So now our last question is, do we have a this always works theorem for minimal polynomials? We do. That the Cinder Alpha story always has a happy ending. That there is one and only one glass slipper that fits any algebraic number. One and only one minimal polynomial for alpha over f. And this is true whenever f is a field, alpha is an algebraic element over f. When we can write, we can use notation to express that uniqueness and say that p is equal to the minimal polynomial over f of the number alpha. Let's do a sketch of the proof. Why should minimal polynomials exist always? And why should they be unique always? So let's start with the number alpha, which is algebraic over a field f. By definition, an algebraic element satisfies a polynomial equation over f. So alpha must be a root of some polynomial p. The second step is, if that polynomial is not monic, we can just divide by its leading coefficient and get a new polynomial of which alpha is still a root. So at this point, we've satisfied condition 1, and we've satisfied condition 2. So now it's really only the irreducibility that we're interested in. Why should an irreducible polynomial exist of which alpha is a root? Well, if for whatever reason this monic polynomial factors, then it factors into irreducible factors. And alpha must be a root of at least one of those irreducible factors. Therefore, alpha is the root of some monic irreducible polynomial over our brace field. Therefore, a polynomial satisfying these three criteria must exist. So that guarantees existence. But what about uniqueness? Why is there only one glass zipper, only one prince for cinder alpha? Let's talk about the uniqueness part. By doing the usual thing and supposing that there are two polynomials, p and q, that satisfy all three of these conditions. Well, if they both satisfy all three of these conditions, then according to condition number one, alpha must be a root of both p and q. Therefore, p of alpha and q of alpha should both be 0. And when we subtract p and q, we should get 0 when we evaluate it at alpha. Therefore, we get some new polynomial, which we'll call r, the difference of p and q. And that new polynomial 
must have alpha as a root. If p is not equal to q, then this polynomial r is non-constant. Therefore, it has some terms with powers of t in them. But on the other hand, since both p and q satisfied all three of these criteria, they were both monic, and they both had the lowest degree possible, and so their degrees must have been the same. And if I take two monic polynomials that have the same degree, p is going to start with 1 times t to the k dot dot dot, q is going to start with 1 times t to the k dot dot dot, if I subtract q from p, what's going to happen? Our leading terms are going to cancel. And when those leading terms cancel, we end up with a polynomial r, which is p minus q, that has a lower degree than p and q did. And if we can divide that r by its leading coefficient, we can guarantee that r is monic. Therefore, we have found a polynomial r of which alpha is a root, which is monic, which is irreducible, which has a lower degree than p and q did. That's a contradiction, because we assumed that p and q satisfied these three conditions, therefore had the lowest degree possible among all polynomials that satisfy all three. Therefore, this cannot happen. The only way to resolve this tension is if this p minus q is identically equal to 0, and therefore the polynomial p is exactly equal to the polynomial q. That gives our Cinder Alpha story a happy ending. So at this point, we now know that for any algebraic number, we can find a polynomial over the base field of which that number alpha is a root, which is monic, which is irreducible, and that that polynomial that we find will be the same every time we try to find it. That's the minimal polynomial of alpha over f. And it happens to be exactly the same polynomial that in the quotient construction defines the simple extension of f by the algebraic number alpha.